Ah, that's me. Yeah. Thanks all for joining. Um, today I will try to speak about the lake house architecture with Delta Lake and Databricks and to uh, convince you why and uh, why should you choose the lake house over the two tier architecture. Both of them are based on the data lakes, but with lake house, I think we can leverage more, more out of data lake that we are doing uh, with the two tier architecture. So small agenda, just to see where I need to press this. Oh, okay. So uh, first of all, we will we start with motivation of the, what is behind the lake house or what challenges we think that we can solve by just with switching to the lake house by itself. Then a uh, small architecture evolution, what is the two-tier architecture from my perspective or, and um, what challenges uh, the two-tier architecture were solving and also um, then what, uh, what we are getting from switching to the lake house. Afterwards, we will speak a little bit about the lake house itself. Uh, and uh, main focus will be on the Delta Lake open file format, how it works, what does it bring to the table, and a uh, little bit under the hood, uh, what, is, uh, what is the structure of it. Okay. Perfect. So uh, there are a lot of challenges in enterprise data usage, and most of them uh, technology cannot solve. So it's more organizational nature and also process nature of it. But uh, we think that uh, some of the, these challenges that are on the uh, pointed, uh, we can solve just switching to the lake house and with the delta lake format. So when we are talking about access, the main, main uh, issue is uh, people want to get access, uh, to, uh, access to the data with their favorite tool, so they want to you know, import the data, not to, uh, not to be uh, onboarded to the, to the tool that they are not familiar with. They want to have access uh, over the tools that have some knowledge uh, on it. And also, when we are talking about access, we are talking about the governance. And uh, governance on the data lake files is actually, can I access the data, or uh, can I access the files or not? But with the lake house, we really ha can govern the data inside the files, and, uh, and we will speak about it. We are, when we are speaking about reliability challenges, if I have access to, to my data, is it data, data, data correct? Can I rely uh, on that data? And it's all about data quality. Of course, data quality cannot be solved by just by the new architecture or new pattern. You need to have a strong business rule and strong business processes that should be followed. But at least we think that there are some techni techniques in Delta Lake that can um, increase data quality through the pipeline. And timeliness, when we speak about timeliness, it's, is my data refreshed? Is my data, uh, do I have a fresh state of my data? And um, in the two-tier architectures, uh, data is, re is refreshed for the data science and machine learning processes. But if you need to move the data outside of the Delta Lake, uh, there, 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 is, uh, there is some extra effort, extra job that we need to apply, and of course, extra cost. Two-tier architecture is data lake architecture that uh, was introduced like in, in, my, in my world five years ago, uh, not 15, uh, but uh, uh, it, it really brings some huge, huge uh, uh, it really resolved huge challenges with the traditional data warehouses. So two-tier architecture is a data lake architecture where we use data lake as our uh, cold storage. Then we have some compute over it uh, for the data processing, uh, ETL flows. And this is perfect for the data science and machine learning people. So if they really want to leverage open file formats, parquet files, what, whatever, and to have access to the files itself. But if you want also to uh, make this data available for the BI and SQL, SQL BI and reporting uh, use cases or workloads. You need to move that data outside of the data lakes. And there, that, that, that brings uh, extra complexity, extra effort, extra job, data duplication to the table. Uh, uh, also, I want to say that two-tier architecture is not bad. Two-tier architecture is the most common use currently in the world. And uh, it really resolved 
uh, major issues with the traditional data warehouses. It works on a schema on read model, so you need to know your data only when you start using it. That means that you can collect the data before you even uh, see the value in it. Uh, in the traditional data warehouse, that is a schema on write model. You need to actually know the data before you, you insert it. Uh, also, traditional data warehouses was not, uh, were not supporting the data, uh, data science and machine learning workloads. They worked only with structured data. And um, uh, also, scalability is not really easy. Um, so what brings uh, 2T architecture, some of the good points is flexible storage, uh, low cost, uh, sorry, flexible storage, uh, low cost storage, and easy access for the machine learning and data science. But extra complexity comes when we want to move data outside. So that means we will take sub some subset of data and uh, from the data lake and move it to do some reporting layer, serving layer. Uh, we need to maintain multiple storages and multiple multiple schemas. That can really uh, be uh, be bo painful for especially for the data quality. Uh, data quality uh, uh, data quality processes and also data quality as it is. And uh, we need to maintain more jobs. We need to add extra jobs, extra cost, and to maintain also those jobs, uh, development tasks. Uh, just to make data available for different personas. For example, uh, if you have data in Data Lake <coughs> in any of the formats, Parquet, Avro, CSV, whatsoever, um, business people do not want really to do that. Or to learn py Python just to open the data, to see the file, we need to move it to some structured data warehouse. And uh, it's, it's working, and this is not bad, but, it, uh, but Lakehouse can improve it. So the idea, idea of the lake house is actually to, as you can see just by the picture itself, it's simplified. So we have single so source of truth, that is a data lake store, for all of our processes. So for the machine learning, data science, BI reporting, uh, any of the data processes that you want, you, you, can, you can leverage that from the, just using the data lake as your main thing, a source of truth for the, uh, for the, for in your data platform. What is different behind the, for, from this slide, to, from this diagram to this, is we don't have reporting layer anymore as uh, outside of the data lake store. Uh, we have the same uh, compute that is divided from the storage, that's good. And also we have a delta lake uh, as a, our main, uh, main component, component of the lake house. The lake house idea is to uh, onboard all of the processes uh, with, uh, with, uh, on, on the data lake. So th that you can run uh, BI, SQL, reporting, data science, machine learning over the same data. Just the data will be represented for the data science and machine learning processes in the file format. And the same data can be exposed as a table uh, with the same data content behind it. So one source of truth for every, every workload. Uh, first three points is just copy pasted because uh, we are leveraging still the same data lake. But what we are getting with Lakehouse and Data Lake is, uh, again, single source of truth, the governance over the data that lays down in your, in your, in your files. So it not only can I read the file itself, what data in that file I can read. So if you have some sensitive data, you can put database, uh, database governance over the Data Lake files. Uh, you get a schema validation. Some techniques that Delta Lake also uh, gives is uh, to persist data quality through your pipeline, AC transactions, so uh, uh, AC transactions over the files on data lake, that means every transaction is atomic. You, you have a concurrency control, so that means that you can basically, uh, in the same time, from five different streams, write to the same delta table, to the same file in your data lake. So if you say, if you look at the, the uh, lake house, Definition that says lake house combines the best elements of the data warehouse and data lake. Uh, what that means? We means we, that we have files on, on, on your data lake that can be governed, still cheap, still fast, operational, and uh, you, can, you can scale easy. So it really combines the best elements from the warehouse and data lake, and it combines it in the lake house. So this term really makes sense. Uh, 
And let's see now how we can implement it with Delta Lake file. It's a, with Delta Lake as a main component of the lake house. So what is the Delta Lake? I prepared like three different definitions. First one is definitely the sales pitch uh, that Databricks use. It's uh, Databricks Delta is a unified uh, data management system that brings reliability and performance to existing data lakes. Okay, doesn't say much. It just use few good words and fancy words. Then, uh, Delta Lake is an optimized managed formula for organizing and working with parquet files. A little bit, uh, little bit closer to the tech guys, we know what is parquet. We, if you can manage that and put some organi organizational level over parquet, it's already good. But if you catch me in the hall and ask me what is a Delta Lake, I would just say it's parquet, just a little bit better. Uh, if it is better with parquet, let's see why parquet is not... Uh, is not perfect, so we all like Parquet, to be honest, but Parquet is Im immutable. You cannot change it, you cannot update it. If you want to update one row from Parquet, you need to take the whole Parquet file, update one row, overwrite, again, the whole Parquet file. Metadata doesn't scale at all, because you have for each Parquet file, you have, your, you have a small meta metadata file that can be a bottleneck if you, have, if you do not create your own procedures uh, to scale that and, and to work with it. A lot of small parquet files, again, uh, without out of compaction, so you need to write your own procedures to, to, to manage that. And also jobs can fail midway, so that means that subset of data can be processed, subset will fail, and you don't have a clue about that if you do not invest in monitoring that we all do. Delta Lake. Um, why is it better than Parquet if, if it is a, it's just a folder that lays down in your, in your data lake store. It contains uh, data that is still stored in Parquet, so that nothing changed. Delta log file, uh, the, it contains Delta log folder that is actually the brain behind, uh, behind, behind the lake house architecture. And data is just a typo, so it shouldn't be there. <laughs> if you look at the structure, uh, you can see uh, data, da uh, delta table as a folder, delta log, that data is partitioned by date, and you can see the parquet that really contains the data, in it, uh, contains the data uh, from your delta table. If you want to move from, uh, let's say, ADLS to the S3, you just copy this, this folder, my delta table, and everything, every operations, every, every uh, rule that you have on that, that delta table, every data, so all data will be, will be uh, migrated. Delta log, um, I will spend now some time on this folder and this file because it's the brain behind the del Delta Lake tables. Uh, it's a transactional la layer metadata, metadata layer that keeps information about your commits. Uh, it also keeps information about the metadata uh, that comes from Parquet. And also, it contains table schema. Uh, we can see on this picture that for each commit, commit is a transaction, actually. For each commit, we are getting a small JSON file, and that JSON file contains commit information. We can predict that if we have like million transactions, we will have million JSON files, and that's not really good, because to keep track of your, of your each transaction, you need then to read one million JSON files that actually we shouldn't do any, any time. But uh, what Delta Lake do, does in the background, it creates this checkpoint parquet file after 10 commits, after 10 transactions. That means that maximum number of log files, that you, JSON files that, that you can read is nine plus that one checkpoint file. So that means that here we are solving the metadata not scaling with parquet issue. Uh, query execution plan of your Delta Lake is query is received. Then you go to, to your delta log file, you check the latest checkpoint file to see what, uh, what is the state of your table. Uh, after that, you check, are there any commits after that my checkpoint, checkpoint file? So that means if there is any transaction uh, after the checkpoint, let's say 11th transaction will be already in, in, in your JSON that you need to read. Based on the state in your delta log file, you return the, your data as a result. Basically, your delta log file gives you the latest state of your delta table. 
Now let's see the simulation of uh, operations and how that re uh, reflects in, in different areas. So on the top, we have a delta table representation. In the middle, we have content in your uh, commit info in your JSON files. And on the bottom, you can, you can see the, how that uh, reflects your storage. Let's see that uh, we have initial delta table on the left. So it's some products, some fruits. I don't know why I put fruits. And uh, the initial commit says we added uh, 01 per k file. On the bottom, you can see that also in the, in the, on the storage layer. Let's say that we want to update only one row. We want to update to decrease the price of lemons. What we do? We type update set price, blah, blah, blah. And on the, on the right side, you can see the new state of your delta table. So lemons is updated. Then in your transactional log, uh, the delta log folder, you are getting a new commit that says we removed the part 01 per k and we added part 02 per k. On the bottom, you can see that part 01 per k, or let's say, let's call it the first per k file, uh, is still there. So this uh, deletion is a, logic, a logical deletion because here we are leveraging then some of the functionalities of uh, backup, mm, disaster recovery, and sorry, I'm getting something in my mouth. And also, um, for example, if we are, we forgot to put a where clause, the parquet files will be deleted if you're using parquet. But with Delta, we can always revert to the part 01 part uh, 01 uh, parquet to the, to the initial state of your delta table, and you can recover all of the data. So this removal is just a logical removal, uh, but we will see how that can also be a physical removal of the file. Then, if you want to delete something from the, from the table, again, we write, let's say on the left side, we have latest state of, la latest state of the table. Last commit was 0 0.01 JSON. And this is the state in the storage. On the right side, we have a new, new state of the table. When we say, OK, we are removing part 0 2 per k. Again, only logically. And we are, again, adding. That is really interesting that even we are deleting the files, deleting the rows, we are adding a new per k file. So per k is a per k. It's immu immutable, and we cannot change that. But we can add some controller over it, metadata layer, what we are doing. And it says, now parquet 03 contains only, three, only two rows. And that is my latest state of the table. Part 01 and part 02, or parquet 1 and parquet, uh, parquet, parquet 2, is only logically deleted. Uh, Delta Lake uh, insert, append is really easy. So you're just adding, we are adding a mango, three bucks. We are adding uh, parquet. K04, and you will see the state in your storage that uh, we added one per K with just one row. So our late, if, we, if we are now simulating our latest state of the table, when we want to read uh, the whole table, it will not look at the part K01, part K02. It will only look at the part K03 and 04, and it will return the data and your, your results. If you go back to the query execution plan, it will take the call f all four JSON files from initial, initial commit to the fourth commit, and it will see that he doesn't need to look in the parquet par 01 and parquet 02, and it will just take three and four. Why transactional log is important and why I spent uh, the whole seven minutes on it is because it's really giving all of these optimization features over the Delta Lake, over your Data Lake files. That's quite important. So let's say time traveling is a feature where you can restore your Delta table on one of the previous versions. Don't use time travel to build historical views, historical data, because it, it will crash and it will just throttle your, your throughput and throttle your Data Lake because it will have, like let's say, one million JSON files. Who knows how many parquet files? So do, uh, use time travel just for as a backup disaster recovery uh, feature. Then governance. In Databricks, there is currently a tool that is called Unity Catalog, where you can 
actually give database governance over the data lake files. Um, we need to do it on the column level, row level, not on the file level. Metadata scaling with the checkpoint, parquet, we saw it, pretty good. Maximum 10 metadata files that you need to read or commit informations. Acid, acid transactions, each transaction is atomic here. It did either succeed or either fail. Uh, concurrency control, they're using optimistic concurrency. That means they, if you two users try to write at the same time, only one will succeed. The, the second one, we just need to repeat his operations. Conflict can happen only if we are updating the same file. Sorry, same data. Indexing, indexing or optimization, uh, few techniques. So, as you know, uh, Parquet has uh, statistics of each column in min and max value. We can leverage that to Z order the whole delta table to perform data skipping. Uh, also, there are optimization tools to, as I said, Parquet files are only logically deleted. But if you perform the vacuum operation, for example, uh, with that accepting the retention policy, we can say uh, in the del to Delta, after 30 days, delete the older versions of your Delta table that we delete them. Physically, it will delete Parquet, and also it will delete all the JSONs, all the commits information that are older than 30 days. Um, Delta Lake also offers auto compaction of small files into, into bigger parquet files, as we do not really want to work with one million parquet files, and we don't want to work with 10 small parquet files, you want one big. Uh, also, these kind of operations will, uh, be, uh, will show in your, as your transactions, in your commits information, because if you auto compact your smaller files, that means some of the parquet files will be removed, some of those will be added, so it's actually a transaction. Of course, partitioning can be performed. And yeah, schema validation is something that um, with delta tables, you can have also identity columns. You can have uh, put some expectations in each of your pipeline. So and you can enforce schema, override schema of your delta table. So it's already, it's already, already comes as a feature. Um, I think that's it. Now, <laughs> that was a great conclusion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you maybe ready for some questions? Yes, please, before cocktails. Do we have some? We do. Let me just bring you the mic. Give me your questions for my prepared answers. Thanks for the presentation. Um, Disregarding the data bricks, uh, can you give us a comparison between iceberg, the delta tables, and hoodie? Iceberg is something that is quite similar to this. It also, it also, also has a metadata layer over the files, and it gives the same experience, basically. I, I didn't work with that, so I cannot answer. OK. Do we maybe have some more? Mm -hmm. Uh, hi, thanks for the presentation. Uh, my question is around uh, data storage. Uh, um, do we delete files ever? Uh, is there something to like save storage? Uh, what happens on the temp commit? Is there some optimization there? Yeah, perfect. So yes, we delete files. Um, there is a function that does that for you. It's called vacuum. And it will delete physically also per end commits uh, after some time period that you define. So if you d define retention policy 30 days, if all data commits will be deleted that are older than 30 days. So you can revert your delta, delta table only on the state 29 days ago. In terms, uh, can you repeat the second question, sorry? Uh, yeah, actually, you, you all um, delta lake in the background from this 10 commits in the JSON create a checkpoint parquet file. So you, instead of reading 10 JSON files, you're just reading one parquet with all of the statistics and et cetera. 
Thank you for your presentation. Uh, was there any negative surprise uh, with using Delta Lake? Delta Lake negative surprise? Uh, to be honest, not. Because um, when, when we started migration to the, to the Databricks, we wanted just to make, to migrate compute part. Uh, so from one, uh, one compute engine to switch to the Databricks. And when we saw the Delta Lake and all of the, of the features, opportunities, only bad side is that it's currently it's 2.0 version, 2.1, and all new versions are for us refactoring because they're really uh, uh, releasing a good features. So for example, in 1.2, we got identity columns, so we could make up all the schemas. So actually, not actually, I don't have any, any, any bad, bad experience with it, only that I'm refactoring my tables all the time. <laughs> Uh, try it, and I know you did. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's me again with the comparisons. So when you say compute, uh, did, you did you try the Snowflake? Because it, it's not the similar, but uh, it can be used similar uh, as Databricks. Yeah, but the main difference is you push data to the Snowflake. Here, data can be wherever you want. You know, you can, you can leverage any storage that you, that you are using, prefer preferably S3, hub, ADLS, uh, and then compute is totally separate. That is, for me, main difference. Did I maybe see some more hands? Yeah, let me just come to you. Hi, thank you for the presentation. My question is about the conflict resolution. How do you resolve them? Thank you. Yeah. So uh, if you are doing appending in more analytical workloads, you're just doing appending. You just need to retry because uh, you need to revert on the latest state of your JSON commit transaction. Only, uh, let's say, a uh, merge conflict can it be if you are updating the same record, same data. That, that is currently not, I think, um, you cannot resolve that. <laughs> you need always on then just to repeat the step to revert to the latest state to your, uh, of your delta table and then to do update. Yeah. It's edge case, but that happens. Yeah. Was this the last one? Yeah? Okay, let's give Dragon one more applause. Thank you.